Hi, this PowerPoint discusses the sociological perspective and how this perspective relates to the study of race and ethnicity in the world today. You will notice in all of my PowerPoints that the first slide of each of the presentations includes a list of topics or concepts that will be discussed in the lecture. The words in bold are those that you will be responsible for in the exam for this unit. On this slide, I give you an introduction of sociology from a textbook that I have used as long as I've been teaching. Uh, it's written by John Marshonis. Take a moment to read the definition. Below the definition, I have, quote, deconstructed, end quote, this definition into its four parts. Systematic study means it is one of the social sciences using the scientific methods for research. While we will not cover this topic of research in this course, scientific research remains the basis for our readings and for our analysis. The second and fourth parts of the definition, groups and societies, and affect behavior, are most important in defining sociology. It connects an individual's behavior to the world in which they live. We will continue to discuss this connection. The third component that people build these groups and societies is also very important that people construct their world to survive, to make sense of the physical world around them, to make sense of their experiences. And if they build their social world, then they can change it or rebuild it. Another way of explaining the sociological perspective is shown in this slide. We are both individuals and social beings. On the left of the slide, we see the individual snowflakes, no pun intended. Uh, they are each different in shape and size, but are all snowflakes. Like humans are different, but all of the same species. On the right side of the slide, we see a tree covered by snowflakes. It forms a pattern, or we can think of it as a society. The individual differences are now less visible, even though they're still there. Think about the tree. Where the snowflake lands, whether on the trunk, far out on a branch, is going to affect its life. Those on the outside branches are going to be more easily blown off. Those on the inside branches or trunk of the tree are going to last longer. Without carrying this analogy too far, we can see several things. A pattern is formed. An individual becomes part of that pattern, one of the many and the, the individual's location in the pattern is going to affect that individual's life chances. We need to look at these things to understand the individual. If you have taken an introduction to sociology course, you may have heard the term sociological imagination in discussing the sociological perspective. It is a term first used by C. Wright Mills, a famous sociologist from the 1950s and 1960s. Mills talked about the ability or a person's imagination, creativity, to see the relationship between the individual and the society around the individuals. He emphasized historical events, such as the Great Depression, World War II, and the technological changes occurring at any time in history. This emphasis on the historical or social forces around a person can influence entire generations. Think about your own social world, the economy that exists today, the events around the world, technology, oh, that cell phone, and how you are different from your parents and grandparents because of these. So what do sociologists study? An easy answer is to say they study everything. But basically, if we divided them into categories, there would be three major things. Number one would be social facts and forces outside the individual. Two would be the social unit, such as institutions or groups. 
and three would be social processes such as globalization or industrialization. What we see here on uh, slide six are the first two, the social facts or forces, things, events that happen outside the individual, but they affect the individual. Certainly the rules of the society, these guide behavior, you know, what are, how do you know how to stand in line outside the theater? How do you know that you have to stand in line? Uh, in Great Britain, for example, they stand in line to catch the bus. We don't. We just generally have a group of people standing there together. But sometimes we get into um, a straight line or sometimes we get into certain order that people uh, get onto the bus. Regardless, they are rules of the society and they influence our behavior. The second thing, um, very important, is technology, of course. Um, this particular picture that I'm showing here on this slide uh, shows us from uh, Pennsylvania, the Amish who still use uh, the horse and buggy. Uh, and of course, next, next to it is a motorcycle, very different uh, technology. But how people uh, who live in an industrialized society are affected um, differently than those that might live in an agricultural society. And we'll certainly see this around the world as we see different levels of technology in many different countries. The second thing that we see on this slide is social units, groups, institutions. Uh, the family is probably the first group that we think about, um, but certainly our peer group. And, and we are going to focus in this semester on ethnic groups. Uh, but they're certainly not the only group. It's just that we happen to, to like to look at the world through that perspective to learn as much as we can in this course. Okay. Slide seven uh, shows us a list of social processes and you can look at the social interaction, uh, socialization, industrialization. These are processes that have continued and are continuing even today. On slide nine, I have given uh, three different links to three different uh, trailers from three different movies, all three very short. So it'll only take you a few minutes to watch each of these. Um, I have embedded them under this PowerPoint in, um, in Canvas. Uh, take a few minutes to look at those. And what I want you to look for is to look for the differences in the social world that these individuals live in. What is their position on the tree? Look for the various institutions influencing the young people and look for the social processes around them. All of these topics will be involved in your first discussion, which is due at the end of this week. Look for this assignment in your discussion tab here in Canvas. Okay, moving on to slide 10. What I'm showing you here is another way of looking at my infamous tree. Uh, what this shows is your social world and the different levels of analysis that sociologists look at. As you see, there is an inner circle, that's you, that's the smallest level, the micro, uh, which looks at you, your friends, your uh, family. But as you move out into the larger parts, the meso meaning, simply meaning middle, uh, you begin to see that there is a um, community around you. There's national organizations, institutions, uh, ethnic groups, subcultures, these kind of things. Uh, the macro level, simply meaning very large, um, is the total society you live in. For example, the United States. It's very large. It has different parts to it. Uh, it may be different on the East Coast to the West Coast. Um, and where you are in that social world or how you're affected by it. For example, if you came originally from the East Coast and moved to California, you would still have the influence of the East Coast, but you would also have the influence of the West Coast because you're living here now. And it keeps getting larger and larger as we start to um, talk about um, the global world. And that's pretty much our emphasis here is what is happening out there in the global world. 
for each individual, this is going to be different. And I'll use religion as my example. For some individuals, religion would be very close to the, to the micro level. Maybe um, it would be the most important thing after your family, your community. For other people, it is not so important. It's probably up on the level of society. We happen to live in a Christian society. Doesn't mean that religion might play a very important part for you as an individual, but it has shaped and influenced um, American society. And as we saw in this last election, it may influence it at one time in different ways that it influences it at other times. And finally, um, we um, look at the study of race and ethnicity from a sociological perspective. Ethnic groups, as we will see later in the semester, and races um, have been created by people in their social world for some reason. Sometimes nice reasons, sometimes not so nice reasons. Um, either used as a way to identify or to belong to a group or maybe used uh, to control another group of people. So they are a social unit. Um, the sense of belonging to an ethnic group may be strong for some but less for others. It is also a very important social factor force. Identification with an ethnic group has implications for a person's life. You may not choose to identify with an ethnic group, but the people in the society may choose or may force the identification on you. So this is something that is going to have a great impact on people's lives, even if they might not want it to. And of course, it's a social process. We only have to look at slavery. Slavery is a continuing process that started in ancient times. Uh, we are most familiar with it as it affected the new world um, in lots of different ways. And we will look at that in uh, particularly looking at South America and some of those areas. Um, but even today, slavery exists. It may not exist in the same form that it did in ancient times or in the slavery as we think of it in American society, uh, but it does still exist today. And this process is going to affect uh, social interaction between people. Race and ethnicity has been discussed in sociology uh, since its beginning in the 1800s. Max Weber, a German sociologist, saw the sense of belonging to an ethnic group as the foundation of community and an important part of how we see ourselves. Don't associate Weber with Hitler's belief system, totally different. Um, Weber did not say one group was superior to the other. He just said it represented community. Okay. Karl Marx, however, believed that social class should and would replace the sense of ethnicity. He saw it as being a larger uh, sense of identification for people that regardless of your race or ethnicity, um, social class was more important to the effect on your life. And many people today still agree with that. The third is W.E.B. Du Bois, the famous American sociologist of the first part of the 1900s, who said race relations would be the most important issue of the 20th century. I think we can say that about the 21st century also. This concludes lecture one. As you see, I have a summary here at the, the end of the PowerPoints. Uh, I have that on all of my PowerPoints. It gives us a way of kind of summarizing what we've talked about. And as you can see, there are four major areas here that we've talked about. Uh, what is sociology? What does sociology study? Um, looking also at the micro, macro, meso levels of analysis that sociology does. Um, but it also gives us a framework in which to study race and ethnicity. From the start of sociology, theorists have looked at the influence of ethnicity for the individual.